It's my pleasure to welcome Secretary Louie Lewis. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
are the contractors that, uh, that hire the people. The largest segment of unemployment in America today is in the building trades, people who build roads and bridges, because there is no work. The other crisis in transportation is the lack of money. The Highway Trust Fund is broke. It's broke because uh, we haven't raised the gas tax in 20 years. The last time the gas tax was raised was 1993 under President Clinton. And if we want to get back to being number one, if we want to get back to a six-year program, if we want to get back to the idea of a big pot of money to rebuild America, we need to increase the gas tax. I talked about increasing at 10 cents a gallon and indexing it. If the gas tax had been indexed in 93, we wouldn't be having this debate. We'd have the money. And what I mean by that is you index it to the cost of living. So as the cost of living goes up, the gas tax goes up proportionately to whatever the cost of living is. And then you don't have to go back every year or every 10 years or every 20 years and ask politicians to raise it. President Reagan, who was considered a conservative president, raised the gas tax in 1983. President George Herbert Walker Bush, when he was president, raised the gas tax. Why? Because the Highway Trust Fund was depleted. President Clinton raised the gas tax. And it hasn't been raised in 20 years. The gas tax is what built America. The gas tax is the pot of money that gave us the ability to be number one in infrastructure. And we are not any longer. And those of you that have traveled to Europe and Asia know what I'm talking about. China is building several new airports over the next five years. They're building high-speed rail. They're building new roads and bridges. And what happens when that occurs? Businesses begin to look at the infrastructure in other countries in terms of locating their businesses there because they have the ability to attract business. When you build a road, it becomes an economic engine, becomes an economic corridor. Look at our interstates. Look at how many small businesses are located along our interstates where hundreds of thousands of jobs are created every day. And you build a rail line, a bus line, a, a highway, and you create an economic corridor where jobs are created. Investing in infrastructure is a win-win. The money doesn't stay in Washington. It goes out to the states, to the governors, to the DOTs, to the contractors, to the engineers who are doing the work. And we haven't made those investments in a good long time. And I don't frankly see it happening unless the American people decide that they're going to engage their representatives and start talking to them about raising the revenue and passing a six-year bill. There is no talk of either one of those in Washington today. It is very sad. And um, our roads are crumbling. I don't have to tell any of you that. Now, states have taken it upon themselves to raise their own gas tax. In the last two years, 14 states including some very conservative states like Wyoming and Utah, both of these states are controlled completely by Republicans. Republican governor, Republican legislators. In Utah, they raised the gas tax last year five cents a gallon. That money will be put back into state roads and state bridges. Why? Because nothing's happening in Washington. Wyoming, a completely Republican state, a Republican governor, Republican legislators. Not one of those people was thrown out of office because they raised the gas tax. In Virginia, they, sw they swapped the gas tax for the sales tax. Nobody was thrown out of office because of that. And so we need to begin to engage our federal legislators that they need courage, a vision, foresight to get us back to being number one, to invest in America, to invest in the American people, to invest in roads and bridges. And those, uh, I think, uh, two crises are the, the two main things that I think have, have really uh, hurt our country and hurt our ability uh, to really uh, make progress on infrastructure. When we came into the job at DOT in 2009, the Congress passed the economic stimulus bill. It was much criticized and much decried. It was an $870 billion bill 
primarily designed to bail out banks and financial institutions and so forth. But in that bill was $48 billion that came to the Department of Transportation, which we spent in two years, $28 billion on roads and bridges, it went back to the states, $8 billion on transit, came to places like the Chicago Transit Authority and other transit organizations that are 50, 60 years old, needed new cars, new tracks, new infrastructure, $8 billion for high-speed rail, a billion for airports. That money was spent in two years and thousands of people went to work. And my point in telling you this is, when you make that kind of investment, you really uh, make an impact. You really put people to work and you really begin to build infrastructure. So the answer uh, to getting us moving is the American people uh, need to persuade federal legislators, both Congress people and senators, that they need to pass a six-year bill. A two-year bill gives no certainty to anybody, no certainty to planners, architects, contractors. We need a six-year bill. I served in Congress for 14 years. I was on the Transportation Committee. We passed two six-year bills and passed with over 400 votes in the House, over 80 votes in the Senate. Transportation has always been bipartisan. There are no Republican or Democratic roads. There are no Republican or Democratic bridges. These are American roads and American bridges for the American people that attract business, that create jobs, that create economic development. And uh, that's, that, that, that's the direction that we need to start moving in again.